Hi there, this is Bill Houston. I'm going to try to do a quickie little podcast kind of format. Um, I want to tell you about something that happened to me today in Broome County, New York. This is in the village of Endicott. Um, I happened to be in court that day, uh, today, and I want to tell you about what I witnessed uh, in the court. The judge was named uh, Alfonso Ortega, and um, this guy is clearly corrupt. Let's just say that. And let me tell you about what I saw. It's very disturbing to me. Uh, it's very personal to me. Um, I saw two families get evictions, get evicted. These orders of, of eviction um, or warrants of eviction. And uh, they give you three days to get out. And what I'll tell you is, around here, New York State, Broome County, there is nobody that, uh, there's no lawyers that will help you. If you're a poor person, good luck. There's nobody that will help you. There's not even any lawyers that know the relevant statutes, that know the law. Um, I know this very well because I was evicted in 2007. It was quite illegal. Um, I got a little help from a guy that isn't a lawyer, but he is one of the few people that does any kind of advocacy work for poor people to fight these illegal evictions. And um, and he gave me some pointers. I mean, I wouldn't say it was legal advice, but he just gave me some pointers. He said, look here, look here. So I looked there. I did the work myself. And um, I went before a judge in Binghamton. Um, his, the judge's name was Robert Murphy. Once again, this guy is a completely corrupt judge. Um, he ended up getting disbarred over some kind of uh, conflict of interest situation. I don't remember the details, but he got disbarred uh, shortly after um, I was evicted. So I went before the judge, and I had the law written out. And I said, this is what I found in the law. Uh, this guy can't evict me. My rent is up, has been paid. My rent is uh, up to date. So this is an illegal eviction. And he didn't know what to do. He didn't, he's never seen anything like this before. So he, um, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, adjourn this while I think about this. Unbeknownst to me, the lawyer that was uh, representing the out-of-state landlord, and I'm sorry, it wasn't out-of-state, it was downstate, it was somebody from New York City. Um, so this lawyer, um, who was actually my neighbor at one point when I lived in Binghamton, um, his name is Alex, don't recall his name, but he, um, I lived on Be- Beethoven Street. He lived uh, right across from me. Um, and uh, he was representing, he's one of these shyster lawyers that uh, works for New York City people to evict local people from their homes. And so, unbeknownst to me, so this went on for weeks and weeks and weeks. I was in limbo. I didn't know what was going on. Finally, I got the eviction order. Three days, you got to get out. That's all they give you. Once you get this warrant of eviction served on you, you're out. Three days. Can you imagine packing up? You don't even know where you're going to go. You don't have any other apartment lined up. You're probably in some kind of financial difficulty because that's why most of these people are getting evicted because they haven't paid their rent for various reasons. So you're, you're, you're in this hardship situation as it is. You've got no rights. The law is very much weighted toward the landowners and not for the, uh, the tenants. Tenants, I believe, have a little bit more rights in New York City, but generally in the state, it sucks. Um, uh, Because the law is not on your side, there's a couple of little things that you can fight for if you're suffering eviction in New York. Not many. So, one has to do with habitability of um, uh, the house or the apartment that you're renting, and the other has to do with calendar notice. So if you are on month to month, in other words, if you either signed a lease where you were just operating month to month the whole time, 
or if you completed your term, let's say, you know, most people's term is three months, I'm sorry, usually like six months to 12 months. Those are the typical t initial terms for a lease. Once you've completed that and you're on month to month, you're called a holdover. That's what just the technical word that they call it. You're a holdover tenant. <clears throat> At that point, you have some rights. And the rights are you have a right to a full calendar month's notice. So typically they put the notice on your door um, and say you have 30 days to get out. Um, so let's say they want to, this is, we're in February right now. So let's say he wants to evict you by February. January is the full calendar month. So you would have had to have received your notice December 31st or before in order to evict you anytime in February. Because you have to have a full calendar month to, that's, that's your, your rights under New York state law. So one of the people uh, that was getting uh, evicted uh, today um, uh, went before this judge, Alfonso Ortega, in the village of Endicott. This guy is dirty. He's corrupt. Um, this woman, this young woman, read the statute. I guess she had looked it up online. So she read the statute uh, for the third, for saying, I have a right to 30 days calendar notice. And she read the exact statute. It's like, a, um, I, I'll have to, I'm going to do a follow up video with all the details, but I think it's a, a New York State Real Property Law 291B, something like that. Um, I'll put it in the comment text uh, for this video when I upload it. So watch for it there. But um, she, uh, the the landlord presented evidence that he had served her uh, late January, January twentieth, something like that, um, mid to late January. Well, guess what? If you're served January twentieth with an eviction notice, you get all of February, and they can't legally evict you until March. So now is February. Um, um, I can't look at my calendar. So it's like February 10th, something like that. Completely illegal. She read him the law. And he evicted her anyway. So I'm outraged by this, that these judges can just violate the law. And there, she didn't have an attorney. Um, neither side in this case had an attorney. But she didn't have an attorney. The judge just signed the order, even though it was clearly illegal. Before her case, there was another uh, family. This was a tragic case. Um, elderly man, and, you know, probably in his 60s, and his wife or his girlfriend was there, um, African-American, and uh, he was a cancer patient. He's undergoing cancer treatment. Um, his doctor, Dr. Bajwa, um, an, on an oncologist in this area, um, again, I'm going to look up this guy and figure out exactly who he is so I can point it out to you. Listen to this. They moved in in October and, um, or the, the man moved in, I think first in October. And what he noticed was there was no refrigerator, there was no stove, and there was a serious bug infestation in this apartment. I don't remember. I didn't hear. It was a little hard to hear. I didn't get all of the details about, um, you know, why he felt why he fell behind in his rent. But the the apartment didn't meet code. The apartment was in um, in uninhabitable. It was not a legally habitable apartment. If it has no stove, no refrigerator, and a bug is infestation. He was complaining to the landlord the whole time. The landlord was making promises. And um, anyway, so they ended up in, in court today. I, don't, I didn't hear anything about the, the notice. I don't know if they received proper notice or not. But uh, this Dr. Bajwa, this slumlord, this slumlord oncologist. So, you know, he's not hurting for money, but he's a slumlord in this area. Um, uh, he put his own cancer patient in his crappy, rundown, uh, uninhabitable apartment, and 
the guy had trouble with DSS getting getting payment. There's no way he. There, number one, there's no way that you're obligated to pay rent if your apartment is not up to code. Um, that's step number one. Step number two is that guy shouldn't be renting an apartment that's not up to code. That's illegal. So despite all of this evidence, right, that the apartment was not up to code, this judge, Alfonso Ortega, in the village of Endicott, just signs the eviction order, just signs the, you know, here you go. And he was real chummy with, uh, there was other attorneys uh, evicting people, real, how you doing? Good, good, good. How are your kids? Oh, yep, yep, okay, ha, ha, this should be an easy one, ha, ha, ha. Uh, oh, this was the other one. There was another one where the woman wasn't present, but in another tragic case. Um, she apparently had gotten violently assaulted by her boyfriend. The boyfriend, I think, went to jail. And um, she, couldn't, she couldn't pay her rent. And they were laughing with the judge. They were laughing about this woman who was violently assaulted by her boyfriend, and now they're just kicking her out. And there are, if you think that there are social services, if you think everybody is talking about, oh, these welfare frauds, these cheats, these DSS people, whatever, what I'm telling you is there are people in this area, and it's cold out. It's with big piles of snow around. It's been 15 degrees overnight. There are homeless people in Broome County. There are homeless people in Binghamton. There are homeless people on the streets in the village of Endicott. I know this for a fact. Women with kids, young women with kids, they are not getting their needs met. There's no churches opening their doors. There's no... Uh, DSS has these long waiting lists. You have to, If you live in the village of Endicott, you got to have bus fare to get to Binghamton in order to fill out your, your paperwork. So if you don't have bus fare, guess what? You're screwed. No DSS for you. So, and some of these people, they don't have phones. <sighs> if people had basic legal services, I'm convinced half of these people would not get arrested. I, out of three cases, I, you know, just by looking at, just from me sitting in the audience, from what I could see and hear, there were three cases, three evictions, um, out of, I should say this, out of three, there were two evictions that were clearly illegal. Clearly illegal. This is happening in your town. The judges are corrupt. The judges are often, you know, they're of this landlord class, this investor class themselves. So the landlords are probably have their own rental properties. They're buddies with the attorneys. There's no, once again, let me say this because I want to make this very clear. There's no attorney anywhere in Broome County that is doing advocacy for poor people to stop poor people from being illegally evicted and ending up homeless and on the streets with no social services to support them in the middle of February. This is the, this is a, the coldest time of year. This is, in my opinion, outrageous. And I don't know what I can do. I'm just a guy, right? I don't know what I can do about this, but I'm going to try because, you know, like most people, like many people, I'm a couple paychecks away from being out on the streets myself. So thank God I have a job for now. Um, we all need this safety net because it could happen to any of us at any time. And yes, a lot of these people have made bad decisions. And yes, a lot of these people might be drug addicts. But just because they're addicted to drugs, does that mean they should be on the streets? Just because, you know, they had some abusive boyfriend that, that, beat, that beat this woman up? Does she deserve to be on the streets because she made a bad choice about a boyfriend? Where are the, where are the agencies? Where are the nonprofits, the NGOs? Where are the churches? Where are the pro bono attorneys working to do advocacy for poor people to keep them basic services, basic legal uh, services, basic referrals, uh, you know, help with food uh, in case, 
She told me there's a place in Endicott, there's a church in Endicott where people can go to, but they can go once a month. She has four kids. So, there are hungry people, homeless people in this area, probably wherever you live, probably in your town too. And it's really easy to just do your thing, drive to the grocery store, drive to where you work, drive home at night, turn up the heat, get into your nice, warm, comfy bed. But um, if you happen to become aware of the fact that there are these suffering people, and you can't just say all these suffering people deserve to suffer. That's not Christian. That's not the American way. We help each other out. We help each other out when we have problems. This was tragic. I just was so upset when I saw this. I just can't believe it. So I don't know what I can do to help these peace people other than to do a video like this and to expose these shyster attorneys. I'm going to name the, the shyster attorney that represented this New York City landlord that got me evicted. Oh, what I forgot to say was, unbeknownst to me, this attorney was writing letters to the judge saying, come on, judge, evict this guy. Come on, judge, evict this guy. Even though I had the law on my side. And this judge knew it. Because that's why he deferred it. He he couldn't make a decision that when I appeared before him in court. He finally issued the order. Nobody notified me until the sheriff showed up with the the warrant to get out. Three days. So this could happen to you. This could happen to you. So you should care about this. You should care about the people living in your community who have needs, who are hungry and homeless in the middle of winter. And... I don't have space to take these people in, or I might consider it, but there's just no way I can do it. Where are the churches? Where are there not the nonprofits, the NGOs? Where's Catholic Charities? Where's the food bank? It's not there. If you think that if you became homeless, that some social service net is there in place for you, you're wrong. You're wrong. She told me this one uh, girl that uh, the 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 second one. She said that there is. I think she said it's months. I think she said no, it's years. I think she said for Section Eight housing, um, which they call HUD. Um, I think she said there's a five year waiting period. Can you believe that? Um, five five years. So what do you do in the meantime? Where are the people helping these people out? So we have a very serious problem with poor people not getting the basic legal services that they're getting. We have these shyster attorneys that are just taking money from these wealthy landlords. Meanwhile, there's no attorney that is doing the work to help out these poor people where half of these, I'm convinced that, like I said, two out of three of these evictions that I witnessed were clearly illegal. If they had an attorney with base, just helping these people with real basic, just cur- just look over the basic facts. And there's only a couple of statutes that really help people that are being evicted. So there's not many. It's not hard. So, and like I said, I know this because I looked it up when I got evicted. So anyway, um, I don't know what I can do. I'm just a regular guy, just like you. But um, I do have a heart and I have eyes that can see and it's tragic to see people walking the streets, women, young women with kids, and even if you're not a woman, even if you're a guy, elderly, a cancer patient, a guy with cancer, his own doctor evicted him. This is a problem, and we got to figure out. We, so this is going to be this is the first in a series of videos that I'm going to do, and I don't know what we can do. But I'm going to try to do something. Um, I'm just a regular guy, but I do have a voice, and I know how to do research, and we're going to see what we can do to help these people. Okay, see you later.